Hi, Derek here. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. One of the things I wanted to show you today was something that can happen um, quite a lot when you're shooting, and I, I do quite a lot of pet photography, and one of the things that can happen when you're shooting um, a wide open aperture is that you lose focus in areas where you still want focus. Um, I'm going to open this image here. It's not. It's straight out of the camera. It's not been altered in any way. I'm going to open it. And I, I'm, when we come into camera roll, I'll show you what I mean. If you just let the image render for a second. Now, if you see, we've got a nice sharp eye here, but we have a light blur over over this eye. And and the reason that that happens is the dog moved, possibly I moved. This was shot at f1.2 and you, you literally only have two or three millimetres before and after the focal point um, that's going to be sharp. Now, because the dog is at an angle to me, uh, this eye is closer to me go back to the, the zoom tool this eye is closer to me than that one and this one here if we go right into it you can see it's sharp enough I mean eyelashes here are fine nice and sharp and there's a limit to how much sharpness you get in an eyeball but if you look at this one next to it you know that there's nothing sharp in there um, so how do we fix that well first off I would not do any adjustments here just now in camera raw and just go straight in and open the image and for me there's there's, there's lots of ways we can do this and, and I've seen it you know the, the, the ways that you'll not do it it doesn't matter how much you sharpen that eye it's not going to look naturally sharp you can use the touch sharpen tools or sharpen filters it's just not going to be sharp um, it's easy to blur a sharp object but a blurred object, you're not going to add sharpness back in. So th we then have to look at alternatives to that. And what you will see some people doing is taking a selection here, Control J, copying that selection and then moving it. And it's, what you'll see also is they'll go to the transform, flip that layer horizontal and then you can just move that eye across there and it's really just a case of positioning it over and above and then masking out the bits you don't want um, uh, on a similar theme to that sorry let's just get rid of that layer there on a similar theme um, I prefer to use the clone stamp tool and it's it's, it's a fairly easy take a sample if you press the alt key on your keyboard Let's let's start again here. We're we're doing this on our background layer. We're making a new layer, a blank new layer. We're not copying in. Huh? Select the clone stamp and make sure that all layers are selected. And opacity and floor 100, and it's normal for the blend mode. And press the Alt key on your keyboard. Take a sample with the eye, and basically just draw it in, make sure you've got all the eye that you want always take a little bit of surrounding fur and etc and there you go, we have a nice cyclops-esque um, view the eye, now the eye has shape you can see if we were to let's make another layer and I'll draw this in, if we take the brush we can see that there's definite shape there, there, and there. It's triangular, but it's not completely triangular. There's a slight curvature at the top. And it's more to this side. You see, it's more to that side on this eye, and it's more to the left, leaning to the left, if you like, on that side. And so we can't just move that eye over directly over, over here. Um, we could flip it, sorry this layer doesn't want to go in the bin, we could flip it as we did at uh, the last one, if we go edit, 
transform flip horizontal. The only thing about that is we're then pushing it's actually worked out not too bad with this. If your light's at a 45 degree there and you flip this layer it's going to be a 45 degree there and it would look unnatural as if you had two light sources. This one doesn't actually look that bad so I'm just going to leave that and what we do I get the, the layer really big and we try lining it up. I think that's probably good just about there. We'll just reduce the opacity. And because of the way the dog's sitting, there's a slight different shape to that if you like. I'm just moving using the arrow keys on the keyboard here to, to gently nudge that in so Still, it's still a bit high, so we're just going to bring it down a little bit. Back onto the move. Let me just bring that down. Again, I'm just using the arrow keys. I'm trying to keep this here in line with what's there before. And this kind of general shape to the eye up here in line with what's there as well. So that looks not too bad there. Let's just pull out a bit. Now because they're not entirely on the same tilt, I'm just going to control T to get the transform dialog box up. And I'm just going to tilt it just very, very slightly. Actually, should have cancelled that just now. I want to get this back up to full resolution. And just going to put a little bit of tilt in there, just so it's not quite... And again, I'm looking at the bottom line here to make sure that they're not bad and the top line's not bad. And I'm quite happy with that now. And all we'll do now is add in a mask, hold the Alt key down on the keyboard and click on the mask icon. And that'll remove the effect. We then get a brush and I'm just going to paint in... Now black's concealed what I've just did, if we cancel the mask, it'll show you what I've just done. So what we want to do is just reveal some of that back in and all I'm going to do is paint white on our black mask, like so, and we'll just hopefully get just the eye back in. I've got a low opacity here, we'll take the opacity back up to full power. Because it's a mask I can paint off and paint on. And I'm going to try and leave some of the old eyeball there. You see, I'm a wee bit high, maybe. So, because we know we're a wee bit high, let's just push this down a little bit. Again, back on here. Make sure I click on that. So that we're in the correct sort of eyeball, if you like. Control T again, and you'll, you'll each image is different. You're just gonna have to adjust it for your particular picture. And again, back onto my mask with my white brush, and I'm just gonna paint more of that back in. And that looks a bit better this time. I'm happier with the position under that this time. And I'm going to take it right up to the edge of the eye. And we can take some of the eye lashes just to make sure that it's nice and sharp looking. And, and into this sort of tear duct sort of area. <coughs> Excuse me. And there you have that. Now, on really, really close inspection, somebody may say, oh, that's an exact match on this eye for that eye. Again, there's another way to do it. We, oh, not too much to do it, but all you want to do is just alter your mask very, very slightly so they're just not completely 100% identical. Um, so we're going to just take a little bit of the highlight from here. Make sure we're on the 
the mass, take a little bit of highlight from here and we're just going to paint in a tiny tiny bit, nothing much, just do that's enough so that that looks just very very the eye on the left of my screen, the dog's right eye looks very very slightly different to the the left eye. Now another thing you could do if you just want to just make it so it's not a complete mirror image uh, take a small sample from close by, you see we've got this bit of reflection here and it's also apparent here if we remove one of these reflections, one of the eyes then again it takes that kind of mirror image out, well, let's just move it in this eye, we'll just take a tiny wee sample maybe I'll have to do it on that, can't do that, so I'm do it in the bottom layer we'll do it in this top, we'll do it in this eye you don't have to do this, this is just a another little part so that it looks similar but not identical because in reality the reflections in both eyes should be very similar, they're in almost the same distance away and, and hopefully that looks an improvement on, on, on that it doesn't alter the face shape too much um, so yeah, yeah, that's how I would do it other other ways to do it would be a merge two photos and, and all that. Um, but this is this is my preferred way to do it. So hope that's been useful to you. That's a clone stamp tool, and that's how to fix a blurred eye when shooting at a wide open aperture. Hope it's helpful. Thank you. Bye.